meeting is being recorded. Um, can we start off? Hello. Anybody who hasn't received the handout? So Jordan has received, right? So uh, I'll briefly outline the purpose of the session, right? Um, right. So this is a brief idea, right? Uh, we'll basically look at the uh, last six, seven years or uh, toppers copy. And I, the intention behind doing this is that, you know, we'll show you uh, what kind of things are happening and how it has changed uh, since, let's say, 2016. I'm taking 2016 as a base year because this is the year I started working with test series, right? So this is my seventh year with the test series and what kind of changes have I seen? And the intention is for you to see uh, how different it is and how competitive it has become and how uh, relatively more difficult it has become to score in GS, right? If you look at uh, some of the answers which were great answers in 2016 and 17, no offense, but it was working at that point of time, but things have changed in 18, it has changed in 19, it has changed in 20. And uh, every year it's getting more competitive. The crowd is getting more competitive and uh, the questions are different, right? So I'll, I'll start by uh, showing you uh, The points were explained uh, extensively. If you if you see, uh, each of the points were taken and expanded, and the idea of uh, segmentation, uh, the use of value additions and examples that you see now, which is very common at this point of time, was not something which was uh, very popular at that point of time, right? Uh, you have what do you call? Uh, the number of points covered in an answer would have been as less as three. And now the standard is 10, right? Uh, you are expected 10 points, at least 10 points in a 10 marker. In these answers, it was very uh, verbose. It was very extensively explained. And uh, this was a different timeline, right? And this person secured rank 50 something. Uh, you have, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, if you can uh, closely watch the question, the question does have multiple parts, but the second yeah, is it into different parts. No, you are not. Can you mute all the uh, participants, please? Where are they? You are audible, but we are not taking questions at this point of time. Right. We will take questions towards the end. Whatever doubts you have, we'll uh, discuss towards the end. Okay. Right. Now, uh, people who usually have a relatively, uh, you know, uh, a difficult handwriting, uh, this is a, uh, what do you call it, copy that we usually show. And you know, the kind of uh, handwriting which was, uh, this person secured rank 96. So, uh, it's not that you know bad handwriting does not work, but it rarely works, right? So uh, many of you who have been consistently writing mains and who have been getting low marks throughout the year, uh, and low marks throughout the subjects. Low marks can be seen in terms of patterns. Low marks may be particularly attributed to people who have great marks in essay, low marks in GS, decent marks in optional. But there's a segment of people who have low marks across. You know, their marks in GS is low, uh, essay is low, and optional is low, and uh, they are. 200 away from the cutoff. Uh, their scores are usually uh, below 300 in GS. Their scores are below 100 in SA. 
And when this happens, what we usually see is that you know there is some underlying common factor which uh, brings down their marks, right? Which can be probably attributed to something as trivial as handwriting, right? Uh, something uh, as uh, you know important as a lack of ability to interpret a question, over explanation, deviating from the demand of the question, and this is uh, you know uh, done across all papers, right? Now, um, this was also in 2016. This was a little, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of the box for 2016. Now this is a norm, right? People to write, uh, uh, you know, uh, arrows and uh, break questions into parts. And uh, this was done by a guy called Bridget Nair. Uh, he had secured rank 60 something, 67 or something, if I'm not wrong. And uh, Anudip Dureshati next year copied the approach or was adopting the approach from this guy, right? Why I'm saying this is that, you know, because you will see that, you know, every year, the subsequent year's toppers are picking up approaches from the previous year's toppers or good rank holders and uh, adopting that. Uh, Divya Mishra's approach will be reflected in this year's a lot of toppers' copies. Vishaka Yadav's approach is reflected in Divya Mishra's copy and everybody else. I'm taking names because I assume that you know some of these names and you know why I'm taking their names. Divya Mishra had uh, the highest marks in GS uh, last year. Uh, Vishaka Yadav had the highest marks in GS in the previous year. Uh, in the year before that, I'm not able to immediately recollect, but uh, this is a trend. So you are appearing for mains this year. Your primary model of uh, adoption would be based on uh, this year's toppers, their copies, their approaches, right? Be it rank one, rank six, rank 14, whatever, right? So you should always mod uh, around this because uh, this always gives a context on an approach which has already been validated by UPSC, right? Uh, this is important, and, and I, I'll come to uh, this part where, you know, we'll be talking about people who have stagnated scores across the last four years, who have been consistently scoring 350 marks, and uh, what needs to be done, right? Uh, right, uh, this was the approach. This is also the guy who first time used a, a flowchart approach in a case study, right? Uh, what will be your course of action? And I think he had beautifully done a flowchart saying that, you know, if I do this, this, this will happen. And if I do this, this will happen. So uh, people have innovated uh, these things uh, before you also, right? When I move from here to 2017, uh, this is the year uh, this guy secured rank 10, right? His name was Abhishek Surana. Maybe some of you have heard of him, right? Somebody's mic is on. Right. So uh, this was an extension of a previous approach. You'll see that the points are getting smaller. The headings are getting more visible. And uh, tables are coming into picture, right? And uh, he's also the person who has uh, beautifully come up with this uh, dimension approach, right? Uh, he is the one who came up with the document, which is a 10 page document, which was exclusively looking into what kind of dimensions can be applied and what type of question, right? If you are asked benefits of something, short term benefit, long term benefit. If you are asked about, you know, uh, agriculture related questions, he had a particular template. So what a template based approach does to your answers is that, you know, it gives you a, a way to generate content when you are stuck. Right. Many a times uh, it's not because you have lack of content, but it is your inability to pull out content in that seven minutes or 10 minutes when you're writing an answer. And a template is something that gives you that uh, uh, direction to uh, extract more content. I'll, I'll, I'll take an example in this context. We had a, a question uh, last to last year, if I'm not wrong. Uh, this was about uh, what are the challenges associated with lithium ion battery, right? Straightforward question, which was very much in vibe at that point of time. UPSC has still not asked, so I wouldn't mind asking that question this year also, because there's a probability that it's in news. EVs are in news. So, so we had a student who had approached this question from a life cycle perspective, where he said, during mining, during usage, during disposal. This is something which is very simple, right? If, if you really think about it, it's not rocket science. It's not something that you cannot come up with. But at that point of time, to have a template which will help you bring in dimensions into your answers, uh, will generate more content than your peer group. See, this examination is a uh, peer performance-based examination. You getting one mark more than the next person in every question will put you in the top 50 ranks, right? This is very likely the scenario in this paper, right? 
so this guy came up with this uh, dimension approach he also had uh, extensively started using uh, diagrams in ethics papers and and when he secured a rank you know i, I had asked him you know where do you get these all these diagrams from so he had said that you know he had picked up from uh, uh, this uh, what do you call uh, geeta by uh, what was this guy's name uh, devdat patnaik and you go back and look at this book so the kind of what what i'm trying to say out here is that people find inspiration not just in lakshmikant and uh, you know uh, spectrum they look for areas to adopt ideas from wherever possible right so ethics is a paper where diagrams are working uh, this year rank 6 right he has said he has extensively used diagram in answers where to use it when to use it and when not to use it right uh, since 2018 the use of diagrams uh, short, short up so much that you know people started using diagrams in the wrong places wherever it is not necessary so there are people who come say that you know uh, sir i have drawn a diagram in every answer but that is not a reason for you to great, get great marks in gs it is an approach which can enrich certain answers and not necessarily every answer in the paper right um this guy secured rank 1 right all these papers are available in public platforms or so none of this is my property this is from various institutions i have taken these copies because i have worked with some of these guys right uh um, he started this approach of shorter points uh breaking answers into parts and he has had a great influence on how people write answers ever since Hello. right uh, mm -hmm. the way he wrote answers was completely uh, different yeah, from a lot of people at that point of time or what right right moving on uh, 2019 yeah. uh, this is a shift that you will see right um, i'll keep this brief my idea of using this is to help you understand that you know what worked last year didn't cannot work this year or may not work this year it is important to improvise innovate in your own way our role is to give you a direction uh, innovation will come in each of you in your own way right uh, it's not going to be a one size fit solution uh, this guy ended up securing rank 7 uh, why don't ready maybe some of you know 2019 right and this is a guy who started substantiating everything possible with uh, hello ha sir kelgada bartta illa ante once and has continued ever since password same ida sir ha wifi password same kdvi hmm. one second so you're on mute hello for one video and uh, the video for the other part right so, uh, so this is also something that you can see uh, see the uh, labels represent uh, data this is something that you can write this is working this is still continuing right table uh, data is not being just put as part of sentences data is being pulled out and put into pie charts into graphs into tables so that it's more visible for the evaluator to see and check the paper right here many of you would uh, probably come up with uh, these kind of statistics but how you use it how you make it more visible and organized is something that is uh, you can play with 
this person had rank 11 if i'm not wrong again a uh, tabular approaches of breaking answers into parts right use of diagrams in ethics the best place to extract uh, updated value addition and diagrams is proper answers because they have already done it you know you don't have to come up with this uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel right it's already there download all the copies two three things that you have to keep in mind when you do this always make sure uh, a copy had people in top 10 ranks scoring 100 marks in essay which is not the best model for essay right uh, also make sure that you know you are extracting uh, content from the year in which they have secured a rank and not uh, necessarily from a previous year it's a general for institutes including us uh, to upload copies of toppers uh, of previous year also just to show that he was part of the program at some point of time or other so always make sure that you know the copy that you are taking as a point of reference should be written should have been written in the exam year in which they have secured the rank right marks that the student has obtained in the uh, particular paper and the year of the copy right um, this is 2019 this is vishaka yadav you can see that the increased presence of uh, value addition almost every point uh, is being justified with some form of data point or something after this divya mishra adopted this and uh, we counted 150 data points in one paper sheet i am not bluffing you can sit and do this if you have the time in each answer there were 6 7 like if it's a 10 marker 50 60 percentage of the arguments that she is giving is being substantiated with some content right so i think what is happening in terms of answer writing is that uh, the evaluators are rewarding people who are substantiating what they are writing and not giving generic statement right two people write the same answer and you write a generic statement you and he writes a generic statement and substantiate it with a small data point he is likely to get half a mark more or one mark more in that paper that's the difference between getting an 80 and 90 or 80 and 100 right so uh, one thing that has happened is that uh, the extent of explanation of uh, each point in each answer has become smaller and smaller to the extent that you know uh, most people have one line or two lines uh, of uh, you know explanation for their answers right so uh, increase the number of points right uh, substantiate and validate wherever possible. not saying that you know this for every question this might work for one because we people like me are uh, standing and shouting that do this do this uh, in a year or two this could also become normal and then we will have to go for something else but i think this is a year where it could still work because it's still not uh, predominantly used right now what is happening in this case is that you know a lot of people one don't have notes right a lot of people have notes but those notes are not reflected in the papers it's one thing to have notes and to revise it and to reflect in the paper and many of time uh, what we see is that you know people judge the performance of a paper based on a few answers and not based on the overall paper you come out feeling that i had a great uh, you know paper based on a few answers that you've written but unless uh, that percentage i'll 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 come to that later right now after this i think uh, the new trend that we are seeing is that uh, in paper 2 we are seeing the use of quotes uh, at least uh, two three people who have scored above 125 this year uh, 129 or 130 is the highest score in paper 2 this year have used uh, quotes uh, in ir have used quotes as conclusions in uh, social justice have used quotes as introductions in paper to polity so use of quotes have become uh, more common right Uh, I, I'll take an example of an IR question where somebody has started with a quote of Jay Shankar and concluded with a quote of the Prime Minister, right? So these things are happening, and I, I, I think a few issues of quote of the Foreign Minister, at least for this year, right? So make sure that you collate those quotes, and I, I think the advantage of collating quotes is also reflected in the use of uh, essays, right? That also plays where you could use this as value addition, right? Moving on from this, I think uh, another thing that I want you to see uh, is uh, we have shared a printout of this. Uh, this is a seg uh, segregated, not the mark sheets, but a printout of uh, segregated questions. Right? This is something else that. Uh,
right uh, this is something else uh, i think it's not there uh, we would like to see if you are not scoring above 410 in gs you are not getting into a decent bank right i think this is one of the conclusions that i'll make i'll, I'll share one more thing one second This is the score. We don't have everybody's mark sheet. We have roughly uh, 35, 40 candidates out of 100, which is a reasonable sample size to us. Right? Uh, this is the scores of essay. And you see that, you know, not many people have scored above 140. In fact, you can count it in your hands, uh, the number of people who have scored 140 or above. Essay has become uh, unpredictable uh, as similar to interview. I don't know how many of you here have gone for interview. How interview scores turn out is something that we cannot anticipate please notice that you know people give the same reasons why they have scored high scores and also why they have scored low scores right the perception of what worked and what did not work keep changing based on the marks that you get i'll add essay to this category now because essay has also become dicey from this year considering almost every question has been philosophical in nature and almost every question has been uh, you know uh, tricky to interpret and um, this is there uh, in, uh, this is not there. I'll, I'll share it. Uh, the other sheet is there. Uh, I think uh, it was shared in the Telegram groups yesterday, right? So, happening in essay is that uh, it is becoming even more difficult uh, to interpret philosophical essays. And majority of the crowd that writes these exams are uh, engineers who have not written an essay in their life, right? So uh, your experience with essays is very low. And uh, the topic is such that, you know, unless you keep going back to the topic every two pages, your likelihood of deviating from the demand of the topic was very high. Uh, and there are a lot of topics which has uh, contested interpretations, like uh, the, the hand that rocks the cradle has uh, at least three different interpretations where people are convinced that this is what it is. And uh, we see that, you know, people who have taken such topics are the ones who have uh, likely fallen from 130 to below 100 or 140 to 110. We have a lot of people who have year on year dipped 30, 40 marks in essay. Essay is something that you cannot uh, undermine uh, from now, right? So having uh, established the uncertainty of essay, I think uh, GS1, uh, as far as I know, it has peaked at 120. Uh, this is the highest score uh, in GS1, right? Um, I can see rank 12. There will always be outliers who have scored 200 something, 400 something, people who have not qualified for the service who have scored high marks in certain subjects, right? But from the data that we have, uh, this is what it is. It's very likely there may be one or two person who are one or two marks more than this. The variation may not be huge, right? Uh, this is paper one, right? Uh, paper one uh, being... Um, a paper where you know you can um, find a lot of uh, issues uh, is because uh, you have geography and society right geography is a paper where a lot of people are not uh, well versed or a substantial percentage of people are from geography uh, optional or were geography optional I, I think there is that segment also people who have moved out of geography also so uh, this set tends to either overperform or underperform based on how much expertise they express in their paper. If there are geography students who write geographical answers in paper one, they tend to fall. Uh, technical geographical answers, they tend to fall down. And uh, same applies for uh, the equation between society and sociology. Last year, we had this student, uh, Mira, at rank six. Uh, the first year she appeared for mains, she had very low marks in paper one. And uh, she specifically said that, you know, she wrote extremely sociological answers in her paper one. Uh, even citing uh, thinkers like Durkheim and uh, everyone in her answers in paper one, which backfired. And in the next time when she scored one of the highest marks in paper one, she had not done that. So if you are somebody from sociological background or uh, geographical background, try not to express your geographical or sociological knowledge extremely in backfire. Right? But at the same time, having a geographical and sociological knowledge also helps you to, you know, uh, understand certain questions, uh, deal with bouncers, uh, write faster. So it can work either ways, right? Uh, 
society is another topic where a lot of people don't put uh, their heart into and uh, ironically a lot of people put effort into world history and post independence which accounts for only one or two questions in the paper right i'll i'll show you the weightage of topics also and uh, the combined weightage of uh, history is 75 marks right your world history post independence modern history put together accounts for 75 marks which is the equal weightage that uh, society has and geography has 100 marks right so uh, people who have to we will get into paper specific approaches later i am just showing you the trends this is paper 2 highest has been 129 or 130 if i am not wrong uh, we have uh, we had last year rank 14 who had 129 we also had rank 31 who had 121 right and both of them have written mains before uh, rank 31 is a low optional student right law optional students tend to have uh, same similar equation between geography and paper 1 law political science optional students have similar equations with paper 2 right i'll i'll talk about this later and how you can leverage this expertise in your preparation right gs3 this has become the most trickiest paper in the last three years uh, many of you uh, if you have written mains i think this is a paper where you are likely to have below 90 below 80 uh, this paper has become uh, very difficult to score right uh i attribute this to couple of reasons one you have the biggest or the highest diversity within a paper in paper 3 you have economy agriculture science and tech security environment disaster management it's extremely diverse right and moving from one topic to the other has become very tricky and also uh, the likelihood of bouncers is highest in paper 3 either from science and tech you have the overground worker question in uh, security last year Uh, overground or underground i'm, I'm not sure. overground was there right uh, you had uh, the s400 question last year the led question last year so if you look at the 1 2 3 4 the likelihood of a bouncer is the highest in paper 3 right uh, i'll i'll, I'll uh, come to that part later uh, and how what you can do in this particular paper uh, gs4 again uh, the highest marks uh, from this year also is from gs4 last year is also gs4 and last to last year is also gs4 uh, 2019 cc 2019 vishaka yadav had 162 last year uh, sarthak or uh, sarthak agarwal or uh, divya mishra had 129 130 this year's rank one has 139 marks in uh, paper one right paper four so this is a paper where you can score above 110 or where you should score above 110 so that your overall score goes above 400 very likely based on current trends or based on last three years trends your possibility of scoring above 100 in paper 3 is relatively low right so paper 4 is where you salvage that 10 15 marks and increase so that you ensure that your score is above 400 410 right why i am talking in terms of marks is that you know you need to set a goal right you need to say that you know i need to have this much marks in this much area two three days we were having a session with this uh, student sanjana simha maybe you have heard of her she improved from 207 to 37 and she said she had clearly established that i have to make 40 marks improvement in uh, gs right uh, she improved from i think 360 370 380 to 420 it's important to define what kind of improvement are you looking for because then you quantify it and uh, then you tend to work towards it right so uh, paper 4 is uh, one area where uh, i'll i'll talk about you know uh, other things that's happening in paper 4 i'll come to that right so see the gs total how many people in the top 100 have scores below 410 so we can't have... it's not seen on the screen somebody has uh, stopped sharing my screen um uh, I'll, i'll i'll share it again from my end is it visible now so a uh, number of people who have scored above 400 410 420 in the top 100 is extremely high right and uh, this is a sure shot uh, requirement or a necessity if you are looking at a top 100 top 200 score the importance of gs score right if you are below 400 you should have max optional or mechanical engineering or an anthro with a 300 plus score right uh, I, i was also observing the marks in optionals and uh, surprisingly i think uh, uh social science subjects have done almost as well as uh, science subjects right take political science take anthro take sociology uh 
I think uh, the number of people who have are in the top one percentile are very similar, right? So don't undermine uh, that unless you know there are certain options, uh, optionals which I feel are more difficult to score. So you have psychology, probably uh, more difficult to score, right? So this is the trends in terms of marks. Uh, now, another thing that I want you to show is this, right? Uh, we have shared a printout of this, right? I think it's in the document. Uh, why we are sharing this is uh, for you to dedicate your effort in the right direction, right? You should know why you're putting XYZ amount of time for XYZ topic, right? If you are investing in society, it is primarily because it is 75 marks for teams, right? Right. World history has become a topic which either uh, gets uh, what they call neglected in alternative years or are you receive questions which are either too complicated that you can't answer or too simple that anybody can answer. So the basic logic is that this is based on past year's trends. Like, you know, if something happens this year, which is entirely different from what I'm saying, uh, I'm not in control, right? You know, I'm just analyzing what has happened and I'm just uh, sharing my understanding of what is happening, right? So based on the current trends, if I am preparing, I may skip world history for this year, right? Considering last year there has been a question, uh, there has been years where it has been skipped, right? Uh, if you want to prepare world history, you might as well prepare from some really concise notes that's available online, right? You know, there are certain topos notes which are 20, 30 pages, right? You know, which you can probably finish in half a day or one day max, right? Post independence is an extension of modern history and society. It's somewhere where modern history and society meets, right? And um, uh, the other things which you can notice are the weightage of uh, geography. And whenever a uh, particular subject has a weightage more than uh, 50 or 25, try to break it up into smaller subsections. In geography, you have human geography or economic geography accounting for 25 marks. Uh, you have uh, environmental geography accounting for 25 marks and physical geography for 50 marks. Whenever you break a particular syllabus area into smaller and smaller parts, it's easier to tackle and uh, you know deal with that particular subject area, right? This is it. We have shared a printout. In uh, in case anybody wants a soft copy, you can always reach out to us. We'll share a soft copy also in case if you want to analyze over and above this, right? A uh, lot of themes are very, this is something that uh, you will have to understand, right? Uh, this is a sheet we have shared, right? Uh, this analysis is interesting, right? Uh, certain themes have super high probability. Eight out of nine years, uh, questions have come from certain subject areas, right? So what is the logic, uh, right? The probability of a question coming from that area is extremely high. Uh, the role of women and women's organization is one such area. Population and associated issues is one such area. Uh, students who are online will share this uh, document. Uh, Bimlesh, can you share this document uh, which we printed today in the Telegram group? In the sorry, in the Zoom meeting, huh. right? Um, regionalism, right? This is important. We have already done uh, some of you so that you can. In the, a cyber security oriented question in uh, security is extremely high probability, an inclusive oriented. Uh, growth oriented uh, question is a uh, high probability that uh, elections question on uh, what do you call comparison of constitutions is highly probable in paper two once you know that certain areas are highly more likely to come uh, pre-prepare value addition pre-prepare introduction pre-prepare conclusion pre-prepare maps diagrams ability of a question on india sri lanka relations or india china or uh, Ukraine crisis is very high. So what you do is that you pre-prepare a map on Ukraine, which you can use on any question related to Ukraine. You see a lot of topos copies and you see amazing map diagrams. They don't do it in the examination hall. They have practiced it before. They are just replicating what they have already done. It's not, 
it's not something that you know or or probably they are uh, they have certain expertise which they have leveraging here they are a geography optional student who can easily draw a map for anything right but the uh, rule for maps is that always make sure that it is being used in the right place and appropriately right uh, i think 2018 we had a question on uh, high codes and somebody had drawn a map and marked all the high codes in the country in the question it was an analytical question what i'm trying to say is that you know the map has to be you know used in the right context in the right place right uh, so themes are uh, there are neglect i was talking about some of them question on uh, you know security agencies and their mandate in uh, uh, what do you call a security topic is uh, relatively lesser prepare better doctors mostly have one part right most test series including us uh, tend to increase the number of parts uh, in even in 10 markers i think some of the questions that uh, you will come across will even have two three or parts the maximum number of parts questions that you are attempting understand the sequence of questions that you are attempting most likely in paper 1 question number 8 9 10 is society 18 19 20 is society right why we say this is because it's very like that you will have a certain expertise on ir in paper 2 but you realize that the ir question is question number 19 and 20 when you have 10 minutes left right which could have is uh, the now uh, people say that you know uh, polity or static questions uh, i differ out here a little bit you have static questions issues which are dynamically relevant the question of women in judiciary is a static question but it is the context of debates around which which we are seeing in contemporary time so thing is happening uh, repeatedly in newspapers expect uh, static questions around that right uh, dynamic themes will get static questions and static issues could get dynamically applied questions we are also seeing questions which is very difficult to demarcate where it belongs uh, especially in paper 1 whether it's human geography or society whether it's post independence or culture right so this is also another issue so what you do for such kind of questions is that you, you leverage your experience of both the subjects and use it in the answer when you're writing a society answer when you assume you're writing a society answer which has a geographical implication you apply your geographical knowledge as well right uh, understanding what type of questions are being asked will also help you better introduction specifically in the context of current context introduction uh, I'll, i'll i'll share some of the answer sheets of toppers uh, and uh, that should give you some direction right so uh, this is uh, extremely important uh, it's already two weeks since prelims and if you have not already done this analyze uh, papers trends and push and give the effort in the right direction right and uh, this is also important that you know you don't over emphasize on areas which you are strong at i sometimes see people from law optional and political science optional uh, spending so much time on paper 2 which i feel is an area where they are already having a certain expertise which they should leverage right so uh, this year we had uh, avinash like i was saying rank 31 law optional student he clearly said that you know i do not uh, study a lot of uh, polity because i am already a law student so i have a lot of advantage there right why i am saying this is in the context of uh, analyzing the weightage analyzing the type of papers that's coming right uh, this document should be useful almost every year uh, there is a question on federalism is very popular right security challenges and management in border areas left wing extremism extremely popular theme right keeps coming okay uh, paper specific approaches gs1 again like i said weightage right areas which are important areas which uh, can be neglected um we have pushed for certain types of value addition for certain areas of paper 1 culture uh, having the potential for uh, diagrams and maps right history having the potential for uh, maps and timelines 
if uh, and if you are not familiar with timelines uh, it's a vertical uh, what do you call a uh, horizontal line uh, where you have uh, you know uh, frequency of things marked across like I, I may have a sample of a timeline let me see This is the timeline, uh, not uh, relevant for us, but just giving you an example of what a timeline looks like. So pre-creating timelines on Gandhi's participation uh, in freedom struggle, Ambedkar's contribution in freedom struggle, judgments, like you know how a judgment has evolved from X, Y, Z, evolution of basic structure, liberalization in India. Timelines can act as good value additions and uh, a different set of value additions. Uh, I'm saying this because you know I've been saying it for last two years. It has still not caught on, right? We always try to differentiate the kind of value addition that somebody can put in their papers, right? So timelines is something that uh, you can try out uh, in particular paper, right? Um, use of keywords uh, is extremely important in art and culture. There are documents which is being circulated online which uh, specifically classifies keywords according to different types of art and architecture, right? Use that to write your bluff, right? More uh, subject oriented and technical, right? Uh, society question, I think uh, what is happening is that you can interconnect your preparation of society and social justice. Whatever contemporary content that you have in social justice, like your schemes, initiatives, data, you can use to enrich your answers in society. And your conceptual knowledge of society can be used to argue better in social justice and paper two, right? Uh, society can also, uh, what do you call it? society has repetitive themes uh, and society answers in society paper. Last year there was this question about, uh, I think, uh, uh, what was that, uh, cryptocurrency, yes. That feels very much like an economy answer and it's very difficult to write a society answer in that. We had um, rank 40 here a few days back, he's from sociology. And uh, he had talked about how he compared uh, cryptocurrency to betting. And he talked about how it is a type of gambling. And then he wrote about gambling addiction uh, into this, right? So your ability to connect a particular theme according to the subject is something which is very important, right? Uh, um, interlink with social justice, interlink with uh, current affairs, right? Like I said earlier, uh, geographical answers and sociological answers only to a certain extent. Use your knowledge, but uh, don't uh, use too much technical words or thinkers or theories in your answers in society or geography, right? Uh, society, this paper is also something that is being advised to start with for somebody who's starting out their preparation because this gives a recency uh, because you have just done uh, what you call uh, modern history and culture and geography for prelims and it gives you a continuity so if you are confused and if you have so far not started your preparation uh, gs1 uh, can be a paper on which you can start your preparation with right uh, people who score less in gs1 uh, most likely score less because when they reflect uh, what you call neglect geography uh, uh, during my preparation i had neglected geography but we did not have such an extensive paper which accounted for 100 marks because we all have strengths and weaknesses. If you're somebody who's looking for marks improvement from one year to the next year, you can't. Your paper has been hovering around 70, 80. It is primarily because of your lack of knowledge or expertise in geography or society. I'm repeating it again, right? Because culture is something that you cannot bank on. One year it's 50 marks, next year it's 20. Modern history is an extension of uh, uh, prelims, which most likely one Gandhi oriented question would be there, uh, right? So it, it's relatively more, uh, you know, doable, but society and geography is something that you have to work on and always make sure that uh, in physical geography, the best form of value addition is use of diagrams to represent the geographical concept, right? So we have had toppers who have had compendium of uh, diagrams ready, even before the examination, they have a diagram for floods, your volcanoes, your what do you call monsoons, they, they, they have it, they have already have it and it's being reflected in their answers. 
and the advantage of having diagrams is that you know whenever you have less content the size of the diagram can always be increased right it, it occupies more space so you end up writing less right you know these are what people do right and i've seen this in top end bank holders copies where there are large maps which has absolutely no value adding to the answer but it acts as great filler right uh, this is something that you can try uh gs2 uh, 125 marks in polity uh, 50 marks for uh, ir and another 50 marks uh, uh, 75 marks between social justice and governance right uh, this is something that you have to uh, see right uh, extensive use of uh, I, i think before i do this let me show you some of the answers of uh, people who have scored good marks in these papers this year this guy had 107 right secured rank 14 use of diagrams most of you know these diagrams these are not complicated ones this is all something which is familiar always bridge the gap between what you know and what is in your notes and what you are writing in your papers right see this question and this is something that we see that a lot of people don't do this is an opinion oriented question some of you who may have been part of our programs in the previous year would have written this question the question is do you agree with the withdrawal of non cooperation movement after the chauri chaura incident right so uh, he has given an introduction right uh, given a factual introduction justification of withdrawal yes why however it was not justified now a lot of students we saw was only arguing one side of the uh, question and uh, this creates a certain lacuna compared to others right so see uh, i am right now speaking in a broad sense in terms of preparation but what you are doing in your papers and what you are doing uh, in each of the answers is something that's unique to each of you which we can discuss uh, individually whenever it is applicable right I'm showing some uh, use of diagrams visibility of keywords cultural backlash son of soil and see the substantiation and see the visibility of the substantiation this is also important it's not just about writing it's also about ensuring that the person who's taking your paper sees what you're writing introduction being substantiated wherever possible uh, he has substantiated this person has a much mark so 98 marks in paper 1 see the number of points which i was earlier saying the extent of explanation has gone down and the number of points is on par with paper 3 even in paper 1 and paper 2 go and look at uh, rank 1's paper 2 copies look at uh, uh, all the people who have scored above 125 in paper 2 earlier our notion on paper 2 was that you know you can explain a little bit and maybe the number of points is 7 8 but now it's come up to 9 10 points in denmark right uh, he has 109 uh, he secured rank 43 you're seeing what you're up against right see the specificity with what people are writing number of points
And you'll find a lot of similarities between people who are in a particular mark range, the way they approach the questions, the way they substantiate their answers. I was talking about interconnect social justice to society, right? Number of points. I think I counted 16 or 15. 109, right? Uh, that's uh, only 10 marks away from the highest score. Um, when we go from here, this to paper two, right? Governance flickering teams use best practices and uh, schemes of governments to substantiate your uh, uh, paper two uh, governance answers. I had one of the rank holders who said that, you know, uh, he or she used uh, last year's questions as introductions and conclusions for this year's question. <laughs> right? uh, I don't know whether you guys remember this question, uh, you know. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, intergenerational and intragenerational equity. Uh, I think this was last year, no? Paper three, uh, 2020, right? Uh, so for last year, the inclusive growth oriented question that was being used as a conclusion uh, in the answer. Look at the way people are uh, innovating, right? Uh, so so I, I'm saying that, you know, maybe you could use some of the questions of this year as good introductions or conclusions in answers next year, right? Ask me questions as both. You will have to leverage this, right? See, when you're expected to know 100, 150 value addition for each paper, it's not individually 100, 150 value addition. I'm not expecting that you'll uh, have to remember 600 value additions across four papers. I'm expecting you'll remember at least 400, right? Because a lot of these, these things will overlap. What acts as good value addition in environmental geography will act as good value addition in paper three also in environment, right? So. But this is the difficult part. It's one thing to know what to do and another thing to do it, right? <laughs> it's uh, most of you would walk out of here assuming that you know what to do and probably the next time you sit and write, you're more likely to do exactly what you have done than to change it, right? It's not uh, that easy, right? Right. Best practices and case studies in governance and uh, social justice based question as a uh, substantiation, right? In the body part. I'll, I'll show you some uh, GS transfers. I think that should uh, give you some direction. This guy was interesting. Oh, look at the question. This is a question on uh, sedition. Um, 124A. Uh, this was a question I think almost all of us asked, or all the prominent institutions have asked this last year. Right. See the introduction. How many of you would have connected this to the current context? The second paragraph is basically the relevance of this question. Why is this being asked? That exact interlinkage with the relevance of the question is something that you should do wherever possible. Because the question is a static question, but it is being asked because of the dynamic relevance of this question. See the conclusion. The question is about uh, India's par uh, parliamentary control uh, being, uh, you know, an outcome of composition or uh, outcome of rule and uh, procedures. See the conclusion. This is a good place to scavenge uh, such kind of things, right? Uh, this is another thing that's happening. This is a new trend. It started uh, 2020, if I'm not wrong, but it is catching on now uh, for questions which are uh, dynamic, but which is uh, related to a static topic. People put the constitutional provisions or legal provisions associated with that as a extension of the introduction in the question itself. What, what, how is it constitutionally relevant? What are the legal uh, aspects associated with this? See this. Uh, 
127. I think the highest is 129. I think here's 27 or 128. 132. Four. Who's this? 134. Okay, okay. But I'll consider anything which is uh, 10 marks uh, in the range of the highest score as a good score, right? Abhinav Jain, 14. 42. See this, uh, this is the IR question I was talking about. See the introduction. We started with the post. So I started this session with the evolution of answer writing and I showed you how people were writing earlier because it's not static. And you may not limit yourself to this. If you have a better idea, we are open to the idea. Majority of things that I'm standing here and telling you are things which I have gotten by interacting with a lot of people right we just have more wider interactions that that's the only difference right but people are innovating you can innovate as long as it's logically relevant you see the conclusion Uh, this is Abhinav Jain. This guy also has 127 in paper 2. He made a 60 marks improvement year on year. 56 or 60. He has uh, said that, you know, he got an interview call uh, because of the GS marks and he got a rank because of his interview score. I think he had 192 in the interview. See the number of points. This is something that I'm noticing, uh, which is new for me. The extent of explanation has fallen. Right. I'm seeing this in this guy also, the other guy also. I've seen a couple of copies at Vision and Forum also. And I, I think this is something which is common. The number of points has increased uh, and the explanation has reduced and the value addition is more visible and increased, right? See this. It's database substantiation extensively. I wouldn't be surprised if I can count 150 data points in this paper. As much as possible, right? Well, a lot of aspects of answer writing we'll discuss in a different uh, context. How people are breaking, making it more visible. There are a lot of things. I'm, I'm right now only talking about best practices that people are following for each paper and what is being done. Introduction. Use of diagrams. I think this is the only person who has secured uh, two consecutive years top under rank. <laughs> Last time she had missed uh, IAS by rank one rank. She was the first rank in IPA, 73 she secured. And this time she is ranked 57 or 57 if I'm not wrong, 57 or 53. I think that's uh, as impressive as getting rank one to get a top 100 rank in two consecutive years. Right? Use of charts. She has extensively, she, she has written very close to uh, Anadeep if I have to say, a lot of schematics, a lot of diagrams. I don't have a mark sheet, so I am not exactly able to tell, uh, you know, uh, which paper, how much marks, but assuming it's a top 50 rank, it has to be somewhere around 100, 100.
te ves así. This guy is ranked 31. He had 121. The optional student, NLS Bangalore, if I'm not wrong. What you have to think is how would I respond to a similar question? Will I be able to write these things? That's the question that you have to keep asking yourself. And if not, what do I need to do that, right? So this is a uh, paper two for you. Paper three, like I was saying, uh, a lot of areas where uh, you tend to have a lot of diversity of questions, science and tech, security. Uh, look at the weightage, uh, look at uh, the approach for uh, different questions, uh, different themes is different. And uh, the possibility of bounces are very high in this paper. The last person I was showing ranked 31. He said he wrote 45 papers between prelims and mains last year. Yes, right. So that's 900 questions. And he said 20 out of 20 questions came from questions which he has already written in paper two. And despite writing 900 questions, he only got 16 out of 20 in paper three. So my my assessment of this is that you know the chances of a bouncer is extremely high in paper three, and that's probably one of the reasons why. Uh, everybody scores lower in paper three, right? Or it is being scaled down. This is the you know, uh, possible alternative uh, argument, right? Because if you are missing two or three questions, everybody is losing out by 10 or 15 marks in this paper. And that's the difference between a high score of paper three and paper two or paper one. This is at 108, 109. One goes up to 120, 130. Likely, uh, everybody underperforms in three or four questions in this paper, right? And there may not be anything that you can do about it also, right, to be honest. Right? The chances of you getting a bouncer from security or uh, last year there was this question on uh, GDP computational methodology, which was very much a relevant topic in 2015-16, right? We asked earlier questions. Last year we had a student who came and complained that, you know, you are asking questions which is relevant in 2020. And we said, you know, wait for the UPSC paper, right? <laughs> because they tend to pick up themes which are even older than that, right? So uh, expose yourself to such uncertainties because you just want to train yourself to deal with such kind of situation, right? If a similar question comes, how do I deal with this, right? That should be the question that you ask, right? Um, economy questions of longer connect last year's questions into uh, intro or conclusion. Agriculture is something that I, I feel uh, agriculture is a poor cousin of uh, economy. Everybody concentrates on economy, right? Uh, very rarely people uh, concentrate on uh, agriculture, right? Uh, be it irrigation, be it uh, uh, livestock machines, be it food processing. I think that's an area. And the irony is that it has as much weightage as uh, economy in the paper. Two 10 markers, two 15 markers from economy, two 10 markers, two 15 markers from agriculture. The weightage is same, but the emphasis is almost half. So if you want to work on paper three, one of the areas hidden areas where most people neglect is paper three, agriculture, right? Pull out that area, work on that, right? Disaster management, one trend that we are seeing was entirely dynamic questions, but now there are uh, static, conceptual, and factual questions also coming from disaster management. One strategy that is usually advised for disaster management is that, you know, not only disaster management, areas from which uh, there is a possibility of bouncers coming is that, uh, pull out questions that's being asked by all prominent SEDs, including us or XYZ, right? So what you're trying to do in this context is that, you know, let's say that if you solve um, all the world history questions that we and XYZ institutions have asked, if something comes outside of it, it's anyway going to be a bouncer for majority of the people. What you should avoid is that, you know, we ask a question uh, like last year, I think uh, AUKUS was something that everybody asked. We had asked a question on rocket architecture. Uh, everybody who was part of our program probably has a two-mark edge over you on that particular question. So things which 
has higher incidence of you know uh, bouncers coming in uh, science and tech uh, economy conceptual questions you have culture which has a high incidence of uh, bouncers social justice in paper 2 make sure that you solve everything that's available around you right and that can be a means of preparation also because if something comes outside of it it's not your headache if it comes from that the former should not be there right paper 3 i'll show you some papers I'll show it. I have not uh, selected it, but I, I have seen this. I, I'll show you. Uh, you saw how uh, the constitutional articles, were... right? If there's a question on health or education or skill development, they put case study as a heading, put a small box, and put that content there. Not necessarily a substantiation, it's basically to show that you know I know this also. Right? Sometimes it's not side side corner, there's a small box and it's there. Uh, case study, right? Um, no, I think whether it or not depends upon a couple of things one, weightage of the question, two, what you already know. Weightage of the question, I would not try this in 10 markers because I'm already running short of time, space, and marks, right? 15 markers I have, if I don't have uh, sufficient content on the core area, this is a trick that I'll use as a filler, right? So sometimes things are not used because you uh, have to do it, but because you don't have any other option, right? In the body part, right? Uh, people are using uh, constitutional articles in paper two as an extension of the introduction, even before the body starts. That's also happening. Right. Right. Not no 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 no. You're you're getting it wrong. You're getting it wrong. It's just mentioning the case, right? You know, solid waste management in X Y Z place, right? Uh, adult literacy program in X Y Z place. No 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 no. Just just a crust of it. Throw it and run away. Don't don't explain, right? Uh, you know, you you you're seeing people's copies. It's being flooded with one line, two two words, three words, uh, value addition, right? It can be applied to geography also. Wherever you feel that you are uh, underprepared, uh, solving extensive number of questions from that area can be a strategy. I was talking about the guy who solved 900 questions. We have ranked 75 who has solved 600 questions. 500 is a must, right? You can't do less than 500 GS questions. Number of days is more, right? And uh, what happens is that let's take an example of IR. If you sit and solve 30 or 40 questions, at least three out of four questions will come from uh, themes which you have already written content on. UPSC so far has been complicating. I'm saying so far because it can <laughs> change, right? I'm saying so far. Uh, so, so far has been complicating prelims question because it's an elimination round. Mains is a selection round. If you have to ask a question on cybersecurity, what can you ask? Challenges, solutions? What are the limits? In broader headings, it can be reworded. This will be this only, right? So I think in this sense, it's more predictable compared to uh, prelims. But the challenge is that you know you all have uh, your own handicaps and strengths. Some of you have bad handwriting. Some of you are not able to remember facts. Uh, last year, rank six days that you know I've never used data because I can't remember data, right? Rank six <laughs> last year. Go back and look at her papers. <laughs> she, she hasn't used data, right? So for every rule, there is an exception. I'm only basically talking about trends being followed by a majority of people. See, uh, I don't uh, dissuade people from using a paragraph approach in answer because some of the people who are still writing in paragraph forms are still getting marks. But majority of people who are getting marks are writing in point format, right? This is Divya Shakti. I think this is a paper which she's good at. Keyword explanation value addition. All these papers are on our websites or others' websites. Right? 
it's all publicly available uh, copies Are you seeing this? Will you be able to do this in seven minutes? That time is also important, right? <laughs> you may be able to do it in 15 or 20 if I give you enough time and uh, peace of mind, but uh, in seven minutes, will you be able to pull this off? So that's the question, right? You go through uh, 10, 15 toppers copies, you will get enough data and uh, data points for this. Thing. You don't have to sit and uh, scavenge from everywhere. A couple of people who are doing this will be enough. This part? This part. This part. It is for me. I think I've told you this. My primary rule for a diagram is that it should be self-explanatory. I'll not have to sit and think, where is this going, right? In that sense, I think this is a, but what, what she has done is that every keyword she has boxed, whatever she wants the evaluator to see, she has segregated that. And she also has a decent handwriting that matters. Right? If, uh, you know, it's gonna come out much more crappier than this, right? I don't have a mark sheet. Uh, she, she's under training. Uh, in test results for you, we have evaluated copy. And for her, we had given her extensive marks. We also had the bias that she was a rank 73. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that, that bias will always be there. Don't go by the test series marks because I don't think uh, anybody can, uh, you know, judge you. Because this uh, whole uh, subjective evaluation has a lot of bias. This is the six years we have, have done a test series. This is the seventh year. Uh, this time we are lucky. <laughs> there have been instances where we have given top 10 rank holders very low marks also. right? But primarily because of how that paper has been written. Maybe the paper was not completed and explained the reason. But uh, this was a... Uh, if any of you have doubts on how we evaluate or, uh, you know, what we do. We tend to give lesser marks. I think you may have seen this from some toppers in the Telegram group. Shankar gives less marks, right? You know, we, we give less marks. I think we are known for that. And the logic is that, you know, uh, you should get more marks in UPSC than what we give and not vice versa. There's no point uh, us giving you 450 and then you getting 380. If it's the other way around, I will be much more happier. Okay, moving on to paper four. I think it's taking more time than. I'll just speed up a little bit. Uh, paper four. Uh, one problem that uh, we are consistently seeing among people who score less in paper four is that, you know, uh, many of them start with case studies and then don't have enough time for part A. This is very common. And uh, my logic on this is that, you know, it's always the uh, part A rather than part B, because part A is very clear on what is being asked and what is expected of you to write. Part B is a context, and you are expected to give a, a response or solution to that context. And you are comparing your approach towards the situation vis-a-vis -vis somebody else's approach towards the situation. And you also always have to assume that, you know, the person who is checking your copy may have a different view on this. And when that happens, it may not be as uh, easy a walk as you think, right? Uh, and uh, I think the older you get, you have stronger opinions and less, you know, uh, open to change, right? And you are, uh, your papers are being probably being checked by an age group, which is in their 50s and 60s. And they have a clear stand that, you know, isme ye karna hai, right? this is what has to be done. And then you come out and uh, give a very practical or very idealistic suggestion and uh, that could probably be backfiring. And because people start with part B and also because case studies have gotten longer, I don't know whether any of you have noticed this, case studies have gotten longer. 
I'll add reading speed as a skill to UPSC preparation now, taking into account CSAT also, right? You need good reading speed now. So, uh, considering the part B is uh, longer, uh, many people are taking one hour 45 minutes, one hour 50 minutes in part B for writing 120 marks worth content, and then come back and rush through 110, uh, what 130 work marks worth content in 50 minutes, 60 minutes, 70 minutes kind of situation, right? My advice is to start with uh, part A. If you want to mix and play, maybe you can write the first five questions and then go finish the case studies and then come back and finish the remaining questions. This is completely true for uh, GS123 also, where people start with 15 markers, write amazingly great answers, best answers and 15 markers. But as an evaluator, I have to go through 10 crappy answers before I reach your first 15 markers. Assuming that only one person is taking this copy and uh, I'm taking it in one sitting, right? And then what happens is that I come into your best answers or your best case studies after a sense of bias, right? This person is not as great as I think, right? You look at somebody's answers long enough, you'll form opinions, you will form views which can uh, cost you half a mark, one mark in every answer. If your 10 markers are not as good as it should be, your 15 markers will get half a mark or one mark lesser in every question. Human bias, nothing else, right? And when somebody gives you half a mark less, he's not even doing it because he feels that he's punishing you. He's subconsciously doing it because his opinion or his first impressions have not been great, right? Uh, GS4, uh, I would suggest to write uh, more than GS123. One, because your potential of scoring 120 plus or 110 plus is the highest in paper four. Two, because we have seen this being done by a lot of people who have written six, eight uh, GS4 papers, right? So maybe you can consider writing an uh, extensive number of papers as a good strategy for GS4, right? Uh, codes, uh, every uh, break again, uh, you know, 130 marks is again broken down into core ethics, governance, and codes. And uh, each of this part has a different approach. We, we can discuss that in detail later, right? Uh, case studies, the way people are introducing, the way people are diversifying their introduction, uh, the way people are concluding their case studies. Uh, I think I have a copy of... Uh, Uh, this guy has 117. After 137, it's mostly below 120 or uh, 125. 137 is an outlier score. Rank one has 139, sorry, not 137. I hear uh, two views on this. I have one set of people who write extremely technical answers with uh, theoretical keywords. And then I have a set of people who write very simple, plain English answers with a lot of uh, relatable examples. Uh, and I feel uh, the second approach is working more than the first approach, right? Uh, and when we talk about, and one of the challenges in value addition in paper four is that, you know, it's getting monotonous. A lot of you are writing the same Armstrong pain and uh, uh, Ashok Kenka and Gandhi and Ambedkar. So there is a need to diversify uh, your value addition in paper four, connected to current affairs, connected to things which are relatable. I had a topper last year. Uh, he said he had, uh, I think this guy's name is uh, Jayant Nahata, 40 something or 50 something, somewhere there. Um, he said that, you know, he had a world map and for each country he had collected uh, uh, examples. Uh, he had collected examples on uh, from Latin America, uh, examples like uh, Frido Colo. He had diversified uh, the tradition. I think the attempt out here is that you know the examiner feels a fresh whiff of air that you know he come to come has not written the same set of value addition as the others have written. So I think uh, diversifying uh, the quality of your value addition could be a good idea in uh, paper four. Rank six has extensively used uh, uh, what do you call uh, diagrams in this paper. I don't have his copy. He has only written one copy with us, uh, rank, uh, paper three, right? Uh, he has extensively used uh, diagrams in his paper. Uh, completion of paper is one factor uh, because of the way people approach the paper. A lot of people don't have great answers for the last, at least for uh, 30, 40 marks are not well attempted. And I think that will have a tendency to push down your scores by 10, 15 marks, right? 
paper completion, approach towards case studies, uh, type of value addition, uh, these factors are important. Emphasize on the context, interconnecting it with something that's happening around you. Um, use of relatable and diversified value addition, case studies, code-based questions, okay. Stimulator uh, towards the last, uh, now uh, the fatigue is highest in the ethics paper because it's the fourth paper on the second day, right? And uh, you can't imagine that unless you have experienced it. So experiencing stimulators and writing the last 30 minutes of the ethics paper is a completely different experience. If you have written mains, I've not written something in 10 years, so I, I, I can't uh, verbally explain this, but uh, we have heard from a lot of people that, you know, it's very difficult to 30 minutes. So experiencing it in a stimulator context uh, at least two, three times in the month of uh, August or September would be a reasonably good idea, right? Notes, uh, I think uh, this is basically, uh, you know, uh, taking uh, notes, content from, uh, you know, notes of toppers. And I think uh, ethics is a paper where you have really good notes uh, because uh, it is not uh, dynamic. Even notes being made by somebody who's a top rank holder in 2016, 17 is still relevant because it's something that still you can use. This year I'm still uh, scavenging on the notes. I have a couple of shortlisted notes. Last year's Appala Mishra's uh, ethics notes were brilliant, uh, especially her notes on uh, case studies were brilliant, right? Take a look at it. It was very concise and she had a lot of uh, specific things that she can use in uh, this thing. Yoyo Choti Singh had a, a brilliant notes on uh, case studies where he had summarized uh, the civil service context rules into two pages and how it can be used in the context of uh, arguing in case studies. Right? Uh, reach out to me later. I'll, I'll share whatever I have. I, I don't think right now I have the time or the bandwidth to do that. Okay. Now, uh, some of you have written multiple mains, have not been able to score well enough, right? You, others are doing, right? Don't be in a cocoon, right? Don't think that, you know, uh, I'm doing this. I don't care what anybody else is doing. Especially when you're writing your second, third or fourth or fifth main. We had somebody who had given the seventh main last time. He secured rank 499 this time. Seven mains, uh, seventh attempt, seven mains, six interviews or something, something like that, crazy number. Right, and uh, right. So uh, it's important to compare uh, from one paper to the next paper. What are others doing? What is somebody else doing in the same context? A lot of people who have been preparing for a certain number of years uh, tend to write uh, a lot of generic content. Paraphrasing the question is extremely common. <laughs> right, uh, it's more common than you think. People just repeat the question as the first paragraph of the answer, or they uh, that that's something which just Repetition of point, the first point and the fifth point is exactly the same, just in different words. Right, a lot of related content, but uh, not enough relevant content. I think one question that you have to ask yourself is that, you know, how much of the content in this answer is updated? How much of this content is relevant to the question? And uh, the more number of years you write, your biggest casualty will be the question interpretation. What is being asked? What are you writing? Are you writing what has been asked or are you writing what you know, right? And this is very, uh, and this is why you will see people who are appearing for the first time coming in top 10 ranks because their biggest advantage is that they know very little, right? They revise that enough number of times and then they put it into the paper. But the more you know, the more likely are you deviate from what is being asked. You'll always try to set a context to look smart. <laughs> and by the time you uh, notice that your one page is already gone. A lot of people come with great answers and show that, you know, this is my answer. And I realize that the answer is starting on the second page. So the first page is entirely context, which is not something that has even been asked in the question, right? Uh, uh, contextualized uh, aesthetic answers, I think Shubham Shukla, I think one of the words that he constantly is using, answers which are clearly demarcated, clearly structured, uh, very visible, right? Uh, mimicking and writing, all these basics have to be followed, right? Many of you who have been writing for years uh, may not be clear because you have uh, good enough notes which you are which two times. Because unless you review multiple times, what is in your notes is not reflected in your paper. And uh, that doesn't help, right? Uh, the 15 marker fiasco, I said the first 10 questions are bad, right? 
and a lot of people feel that you know i have already done everything i could do right there's nothing more i can improve i i think that attitude is something that uh, you can change with respect to this preparation especially if you are looking for marks improvement rank improvement is a different story right you know that's a much tougher fight than marks improvement right um, what did you do in the last main analyze that right and have an honest analysis of that how many great answers were i able to write unless you are writing 50 60% good answers in a paper even your good answers will be surrounded by a lot of bad answers and then it will pull down your marks of good answers also right if you are judging your paper on the basis of one or two questions that you have written uh, it would not work you have to have and that's where uh, extensively writing like avinash comes in 900 questions 20 out of 20 in paper 2 came from questions which he has already written imagine that situation like you know you have already written these questions or themes once or twice right it would definitely help you to write much better answers subsequently right um, uh syllabus blind spots like i said like you know agriculture um, you have not uh, done enough on uh, society etc etc scavenging notes toppers copies notes also unless uh, it is in the last one year or two year don't uh, take it uh, unless you are taking for a static topic because uh, i i think many of you would have referred rushikesh reddy's uh, notes i think i am somebody who have extensively suggested that but i think it's already two years old now right always make sure the notes are this year or last year maximum because otherwise uh, there is a possibility of your content being obsolete right custom problems custom solutions right um, one person improvement whoever is familiar with the uh, atomic habits uh everything <laughs> can be improved everything can be improved in the minutest of uh, ways right something as simple as a pen right uh, uh your sequence of attempts now for time management we have been extensively suggesting shifting from a smartphone to an analog phone for the next 3 months i honestly believe it will add 2 hours more per day and across the next 90 days that's 18 days more of preparation right small things and we see this see when uh, person comes to us or when somebody gets a rank we notice the kind of uh, attitude that person has or the kind of questions that he asks or kind of things that they are doing and many of these things which we are suggesting are things which we have observed in people who have gotten great ranks and they they keep doing these things right uh, what are toppers doing right uh, many of them uh, especially last year we had 15 people in top 100 and out of that nine were people who already improved a rank right this year we have um, 19 people no 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 we don't have 19 we have 14 or 13 people in top 100 10 people in the top 50 and at least five six of them are people who have improved ranks i think uh, the um, uh, the minutest details are important right you know subject syllabus practice they go into the nitty gritties uh, much more than they you think you know because their targets are higher right so uh, minutest attention to detail right pursue to improve is extensive and this is something that i have noticed since 2017 16 i the person that i was showing a copy abhishek surana he had improved from rank 254 to rank 10 i have somebody who i have worked with somebody who has improved from rank 500 to rank 13 and the amount of attention to detail and the amount of uh, you know practice and effort and revision uh, these guys do are crazy you are fighting with a competition which is crazy right it's not your fault it's the way the exam is and the kind of uh, things which are at stake uh, it is not an easy task right and uh, the value addition should be in your answers and not just in your notes this is very important for me if your value addition and if your uh, data points are not in your answers it's as good as useful right so every time you do a paper i ha i have done this i can probably share this this is a little extensive but maybe you can have a uh, shorter version of uh, this one we call this a post test analysis how many answers have i scored good marks how many how are my turn markers these are the 15 markers how are my initial answers these are my later answers i don't want you to do it for every answer but randomly you can pick up a few questions in a paper and do this kind of an assessment 
so that one if this team repeats in upsc you should be able to write a better answer two you improve because you make uh, observations and implement that in the next paper you don't improve because you join xyz institute for a test series you improve because you write again and again and again and you look for improvements we are a platform which provides good questions we provide perspectives and inputs for you based on whatever we have seen right you will only improve if you write again and again and again and we see a disproportionate number of toppers having utilized 80 90 percentage of the tests that they have joined for avinash has written 12 out of 12 tests i don't know how many of you were part of our programs earlier and how many tests you have written the usual average is 30 to 40 percent right if you have joined the 12 tests you would have joined elsewhere i don't know right but most likely if you join a, for a 10 test plan you would not write for more than three or four tests the possibility of improving increases because you write more tests you make more iterations you make more improvements right uh, is this my best answer to the question have i addressed all parts was this a most apt introduction could i have connected the introduction to something more contemporary have i mimicked the question have i addressed all parts how many arguments have i substantiated could i have substantiated more arguments and if so how right so if you're taking 3 hours to write a test i don't mind you spending 4 hours to do a post test analysis because there is a high probability that some of these themes will repeat or questions will come from these themes let's say you take secularism as a theme from society and you write four answers from that theme honestly there's nothing that upsc can throw at you from secularism that you can't salvage from the answers that you have already written right so that will only happen if your post test analysis is uh, extremely uh, intricate how could i get this this is something that you should keep asking how could i get half a mark one mark more in each of these questions what should i have done right post and pre test exercises a uh, pre test exercise is where uh, somebody sits with the paper for 5 minutes before they start writing and decide this is a question where i'll draw a map m this is a question where i'll give more data this is a question where i'll approach from a tabular perspective if you practice this fast enough probably you can spend 5 minutes before you start writing even to sequence your attempts right so we suggest that you know you first attempt questions which you know you have less idea and then you put your last 30 minutes to questions which you have relatively much less idea sequencing of attempts will always include improve your scores because you will give time where it is relevant right no uh, from what i understand i think you get it 3 uh, 5 minutes up, up to 5 minutes varies from center to center right but usually you get 4 5 minutes right either you sit or you <laughs> you look like you know your leg is half out and <laughs> half in <laughs> uh, lesser redundancy of content right more updated content 60% or more uh, above average answers answer sequence are better interpretations of answers are much better they address the demand of the answer sooner i i think this is something that uh, apella had said last year that you know her answer starts after the first three lines the answer must start after the first three lines right go back to your answers and see when is your answer starting what was the question when did i start writing that answer and when did i stop my introduction right practicing a hell lot more right uh, i would uh, recommend 25 papers at least how you do that between now and end of july maybe you can target uh, 10 papers 8 to 10 papers uh, we are recommending to uh, keep a day in a week as a test day right we, 25 full lines it's easy for me to stand here and say this but uh, right <laughs> but I, i'm seeing this being done right you know i am seeing people doing this I even had somebody who had written 50 papers. So uh, Krishan had done that. Uh, Krishan had a, kept a bet with his roommate that you know for every test he misses he'll give him ten thousand bucks. <laughs> right? So I'm not making this up. I'll give you his contact. You can always reach to him, right? Uh, so you need some uh, really strong compulsions uh, so that you end up writing. If you write, you will improve. You will not improve because you join us. You will improve because you keep writing, right? uh self explanatory statements a uh, lot of uh, incoherent statements in people who score less uh, which was not making sense right how to use the next 89 days one approach start with your weak areas right or uh, give emphasis on continuity 
GS fund, right? Uh, two, three things, syllabus completion, notes, value addition. I don't think it's a great time to start making notes, uh, but you can always salvage notes, print. Uh, what we suggest is that, you know, uh, print one side of an A4 sheet and use the other side as a space to update and extract whatever you feel is relevant, right? But you must, must have good notes so that you can revise, so that you can revise and make sure that those content is reflected in your answer. Most of the students who are sitting here, I assume a majority of you have already given, usually attract such a crowd, right? Will find it easy to interpret the question of 2022 mains if you get it right now. You will know conceptually what is expected of you. But your ability to substantiate that or write better quality content will be purely based on revision. And that revision is directly interlinked with the quality of your notes. The bulkier your notes, the lesser you revise. The lesser you revise, the lesser those content will reflect in your answer. So notes has a direct correlation. There are exceptions. This year's rank six has said, I don't have notes. I studied from newspaper, right? <laughs> right? So for every rule, there is an exception. But from what I have seen, a majority of people who score good ranks have good notes, right? This year, right? Uh, Yak Chaudhary, right? Um, Ethics approach, uh, like I said, increase the number of tests for ethics because your probability of increased uh, score in ethics is higher. Essay is a completely different conversation. A uh, couple of ideas that I'm suggesting is that, you know, uh, maybe you can get an outsider's perspective on what you're writing. Reach out to your English teacher in college and school, right? Give your essay. Get a different perspective. Because out, <laughs> because out here we are focusing so much on data and not necessarily on the arguments and ideations that's expected in it. Uh, people talk about you know uh, whether you have included this data point or this committee or this report in your essay, which is not necessarily what is required in essay. What works in GS necessarily does not work in essay because the nature of topics have changed. Any questions? I, I can take a couple of questions. Uh, segregated versus segmented approach is where uh, people always have this confusion of how do I manage uh, optional and GS together. One approach is that you know you dedicate three days of a week for optional, three days of a week for GS, one day for the uh, test writing. Right? Every week you should be writing one GS and one optional, and every alternate week or every fortnight you should be writing one essay at least, right? A segmented approach is where you divide a day between subjects, right? You know who you are and what works for you. A segmented approach is where you have, let's say three slots of three hours each. One slot is for optional, one slot is for GS, and one slot is for current affairs, right? So you decide what works for you best, whether you like diversity within the day, or you like to finish one thing and then move on to the next thing, right? Right. As I think what is happening is that the nature of topics is such that, you know, uh, even if you write 10 essays, you will be thrown across a topic like, you know, your perception of me is an understanding of me kind of <laughs> topic where I don't know whether it would help. Right? Honestly, don't write extensively because for me, essay is going the direction of interview where the scores are not very much predictable. Salvage more marks in uh, GS and Optional. This is what I would do, right? I'm not saying you not to write essays. Definitely, you should write essays, but I don't know whether uh, extensively writing will have a direct correlation with scores. You can definitely brainstorm a lot of topics. Think if you get a quote like this, what would you do, right? That may be a good exercise that you can try out, but uh, not necessarily to write more. Get outsiders' perspective on your essays. What do others feel about what you're writing? Because essays are probably being read by people from literature background or uh, something like that, right? And they would, and people who are scoring uh, has not not everyone, but I'm them are from the Steve uh, Miranda crowd, right? Or people who are, they were 10, 10 years something. So those kind of crowd, you know, people who are well extensively well read and you know who can articulate and express their content, right? Essay, uh, you can come out uh, to us. Uh, I can take a read. I give very good uh, suggestions on essay. I have told some people that don't concentrate on essay, you won't get marked anyway. 
<laughs> I'll at least give you clarity on this, right? Uh, I'll give you clarity, and it's more or less comes true, right? Because uh, you can't fix this in uh, a span of uh, three months, to be honest. Like, you know, it's too less time to fix your grammar and writing skills and everything, considering you have to work on your optional and GS as well. Uh, 2018, we had a rank holder who got the highest marks in uh, essay 175. And we had told her, you know, after she wrote the first essay, don't write any more essays, you will do well in essay, right? It's other way around also. We, we usually have a hands on, you know, whether this person can, you can either write an essay or not write an essay. And uh, majority of people are concentrating on pellets and pestle and uh, they're concentrating on content, dimensions, social, political, economic, uh, that kind of approach. And for philosophical essays, I don't know how effective it is because I think, uh, the emphasis is on interpretation of the topic, right? And how you are able to express your ideas and how you are transitioning from one idea to the next idea, et cetera, right? Uh, leverage whatever you have, uh, uh, your subject expertise, your memory, uh, whatever, right? And uh, your first mains is different from your second, is different from your fourth, it's different from a mains that you're looking to improve rank. You can't expect to do the same things what you did last year and have a different result. You will have to try something different, right? What is suitable for you is highly subjective, right? We can always pitch in and help you out in this sense, right? Uh, I'll take 30 seconds to talk about our program also, right? We have a test series. Uh, we have legends, voyages, two plans. If you have less than 350 marks in GS, or if you're writing mains for the first time, Voyagers is the plan for you because the first eight tests are sectional, followed by four full length tests. Legends plan has all 12 full length tests and it's usually preferred by people who have 350 plus or have written multiple mains. Uh, and uh, that would be the plan if that's what you're looking for. Uh, what we provide as a part of test series, question papers, solutions, evaluation, discussion, mentorship, good answers. This is what we do. Uh, this is my seventh year. The team is also extremely well experienced in this area. Probably one of the most experienced team for uh, main space series right now. So, marks. No, no, GS, GS, just GS. Just, uh, if you're getting 350 plus SA, you should not do this. Plus GS plus SA, right? <laughs> you are in a really bad spot, right? Because that's a place where you can't improve from, right? Uh, being honest, right? <laughs> Anything else, anybody wants to ask something? Mira is at uh, rank six, it's just for my reference. She she can't, uh, she said, you know, I can't remember facts, so I don't emphasize on that. Right, right, right. Uh, this, uh, I feel um, for um, somebody who's appearing for 2023, it's not a bad plan. Uh, for somebody who's appearing for 2022, you are practicing sprint for a marathon, right? Uh, Right. But my, my concern is that many of these initiatives no, will involve you going to a place, sitting there, writing, then coming back. Even if the exam is of one hour, pre and post is going to cost you three hours. I think that's very valuable at this point of time. And I feel uh, that, you know, rather than writing, you can always brainstorm on questions. And uh, every week, if you're able to, at this point of time, write a full paper, that is good enough for me right now. August, September, I'll expect you to increase the frequency. I'll expect you to write at least three stimulators. Uh, in the month of August and September. Simulators one, two, three, four, back to back on two consecutive days, right? We have one, we have two, uh, the last four tests of Legends and Voyagers are simulators and we have an all in the open test, right? No, I, I don't think we will be able to give you 25 papers. You'll always have to, you know, pick up something from elsewhere also. This is a good year to do that. This is a good year because many of you are writing mains uh, two mains in a span of nine months. Uh, the vacancies are great. The number of days are good. And uh, I don't think it gets better than, it was as good as this in the last uh, four or five years. This is the best year in the last four or five years, right? If you are doubtful whether you're clearing prelims or not, hold, finish, but keep studying. Uh, join a programs only after you're clear, clear about the program, uh, about your outcome, right? You think? <coughs> involves a lot of time. Uh, some of them are doing well. Uh, Arpit, Arpit, I, Arpit could have come into top 10. Arpit has 440 in GS and only 250 in max. 
that was surprising for me. Inversely, if you look at Surbhi Singla, she has 295 in optional and uh, only 408 or 407 in uh, GS. Right? Play to your strength. If you're somebody you know that you know I can score 300 in max, there's no harm in uh, investing this proportionate amount of time there. Only time will tell. <laughs> right? I I can't I, I can't take that decision because it it's highly subjective. Right? But usually what people do is that, you know, they spend a lot of time on such kind of subjects. Right? But when I'm analyzing the marks that people have gotten, uh, I think I'll show you that. Uh, see the percentage of uh, marks vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the total return score. GS among the top 100 accounts for uh, 48 to 53 percentage of the total return score. And optional is only accounting for uh, 30, 33. Rest. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? If there's any uh, individual personal uh, doubts, okay. this is in a lot of Telegram groups. I, I think uh, I, I can share it as well. Right. It, it's there. It was circulated yesterday, right? Um, you can take my uh, mobile number or uh, you can take my mobile number. I give my number in to everyone. Nine seven one seven eight three two three four nine. Ask if ASIO, right? In case if I don't pick up, put a message or WhatsApp, right? Whatever I have, I'll, I'll share. Anything else? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. I'm a big fan. I, I think that's a little risky. Uh, I feel the papers are being checked by people not necessarily with the subject expertise in that. And so it can go above their head. Right. Uh, but uh, like this is like, you know, somebody came and said that Ira Singhal has uh, used maps in her essay. Can I also use? <laughs> it's on you, right? Uh, the sample size is large enough that you know there's a rule uh, exception for every rule, right? It would be a good idea to look at last year's questions of test series. Uh, a lot of time uh, we realized that the question that we asked last year is relevant this year and coming in UPSC this year. For static areas, you can go up to two, three years. Three, four years also, like uh, history, ethics. But for dynamic areas, uh, last year would be sufficient. You know? They are repeating things. Uh, I, we had an experience uh, last year where, where we did not, we had a quad question from one of the faculty. We did not ask, uh, saying that, you know, 2019 the question had come, but two consecutive years quad question had come, 2019 and 20. Okay? So they are repeating things as well. Okay. okay. Though. Right. We have a couple of suggestions. I uh, let's sit uh, separately on this. Um, there are a couple of things. It is not foolproof, but we can try this out. Right. This is just a trailer. Right? You know, uh, this is a selling pitch mostly. Right. But the rest of it is uh, like you know, when you join the program, we can uh, look at your copies and give you individual suggestions. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, thank you everyone. Just just one second, just one second. Let me just respond to this. I'll and I'll, I'll just One second, one second, man. Right? Yes. Yes.